So this first example is, is um, rather kind in that um, you're being asked to sketch y equals bracket x plus 3 x minus 1. It's kind because we can see it would be a quadratic and it's already factored for you. So uh, that's going to help us with solving uh, for x to find the x-intercepts. So being this quadratic equal to zero, remember y is zero along the x-axis, so we put a zero in there, we solve it for x, we find the x-intercepts. But before that, let's follow these four steps. One, will, will it be concave up, up the right way, upside down? Will it have a minimum or a maximum? Well, all we need to consider is what would the x squared term be? And you can see that x times x would be plus x squared. So we know already that it's going to be of this shape. We would say things like it has a minimum or it's concave up. Now, I'll just start to introduce these terms because they're aspects of the quadratic or the parabola that we will um, look more closely at in a later chapter but for now we know that find the y-intercept now again at the um, markers HSC markers feedback day to day they the markers emphasized the importance of the student writing what they're actually doing Write down what you're actually doing in your solution. Part of the way to achieve full marks that are available for a question is to communicate everything you know to the actual marker. So your ability to communicate, and the only way you can communicate is via what you write, um, has has to contain what you write has to contain um, what you're doing why you're doing it etc no we don't want you to write an essay but simple things like um, I'm going to indicate that I'm going to find the y-intercept and how I'm going to do it and it is as simple as this y int intercept occurs when x is naught now that's enough for a marker to read that knowing that I'm going to identify the y-intercept. Therefore, the y-intercept becomes 0 plus 3, 0 minus 1. The y-intercept equals minus 3. We could move on very quickly. The x-intercept occurs when y is naught. Therefore, we want to solve naught equal to x plus 3, x minus 1. See what I mean about the fact that this is a nice question because they've already factorised the quadratic for you. This is very easy to find the answer now. Therefore, this bracket could be a naught, so x is minus 3, or this bracket could be a naught, so x is equal to 1. So what we know so far with building our sketch is, oops, 1, 2, 3, down at negative 3, up at 1. We know the graph is going to go through those two points. We know that... It's up the right way, and we know that it's going to cut at minus 3. So, also understanding the feature of a quadratic, um, a parabola being it is symmetrical, tells us that the axis of symmetry is exactly halfway between these. So our axis of symmetry is here along this dotted line, um, because I have to come back to this point, 
I know that my parabola is going to go down. I'm not sure exactly how far yet. Um, and then come back up. Now, that's almost all that you have to do. However, an important feature of the of the quadratic and its graph, the parabola, is the coordinates of the vertex. So you should always be giving on a parabola the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex. Now, as yet, I haven't found the vertex. Remember, I wrote the vertex here, where x is found by using this formula here, minus b on 2a. I'll pause the video and do that and find the y value and then come back and talk about it. Now, up here in the notes, in order to find the value, the x value of the vertex, um, I have also written up here that the x value of the vertex is the midpoint of the x intercepts. So when the x intercepts are nice whole numbers like 1 and 3, it's quite easy to find the middle of that. And you can see in this case it's occurring at x is equal to minus 1. Now, in keeping with what the markers are telling us to pass on to you, you write a short sentence. The x value of the vertex occurs at the midpoint of the x-intercepts. This really is not going to take you very long. And the... Um, it's really worth it because there is no way you're putting your answer at risk of not communicating fully to the marker if you include this. You leave these things out and you're leaving it for the marker to guess what you intended to do, then you are really putting your answer at risk. So you want to present an answer where there is no question about what you were doing or what the marker is um, expected to know that you intended, it's all written down. So therefore we've got our x is minus 1 and to find your y value, and again this was another thing they emphasised, that students don't want to show the substitution and substitution involving negatives in exam conditions is um, an area where students commonly make mistakes. Now, you might think, well, you rarely make a mistake with a negative, but please take notice of what the markers are saying. They're looking at thousands of students' um, answers and they're seeing that this is a common problem. So please take that on board. If other students and thousands of them can make this mistake, it's possible that you could too under the pressure of a major exam. So get practicing now, showing every step, showing every substitution, practice it now. It'll become something automatic. It won't take you that long and you will be the student who is getting the correct answer, even under the pressure of a HSC exam. So you can see there the vertex is, um, is minus 1, minus 4, and we would come back to the graph finally, and we would write that on our graph.